All right. Yes, so random passwords are not good enough. Um, sorry for the clickbait. We, uh, we'll get to this in a little bit, but uh, as he said, I'm Rob Buter. I work at 1Password along with Jeff. Um, and recently, we've been looking at our password generator. I cannot think of a talk that could have come um, better before this one. Uh, you'd think somebody organized this or something. Um, I'm a weaver of webs at 1Password. That's the title I use. I'm just a front-end web developer most of the time. And then I get to play with some math and other things um, on the side. So yes, yeah, so we've been looking at our password generator. and. Um, decided to rethink a little bit in how we display it to users, and I wanted to talk to you about why. So we started with uh, this. We have a password generator, and it's, it's pretty simple. You can pick the length of your password, the number of symbols you want to include, number uh, of digits, uh, and avoid ambiguous characters like um, 0 and, and O, I and, and 1, and all those. Um, but we... Um, there, and so uh, what we would do with this is if you have a password that you want to generate of length 20 and you say you want two characters two, or two digits and three symbols, then we started with a string of 15 letters. Then we would generate two numbers and two, three symbols and we just mix them all together. Um, and, and you can get an, a, a good value for entropy pretty easily from this. Um, well, easily. it's. This is going to be some, some math notation. So we've got uh, the, lo the, the log of the size of the letters times the length of the password, or, or the length of the number of letters, uh, plus the, the uh, same thing for digits, plus symbols. And then we add in the entropy of combining all those things together. Um, we wanted to simplify, both for the purpose of having a, a, a nicer equation and just a simpler uh, algorithm. And so we came up with this. And this is uh, our most recent extension for browsers. It's called 1Password X. And uh, it, it keeps the, the slider for length, but we got rid of the uh, sliders for numbers and, and symbols. Most people don't care how many numbers or symbols they have in their password. They just want a number or a symbol in their password. Um, and so they're just switches. And um, the, the entropy calculation is a whole lot simpler. We take the size of the entire alphabet, uh, the log of that, and, and multiply that by the length of the password. Um, there's a problem here. If you have been looking closely, this password does not contain a number, but the numbers switch is on. And that's because we're drawing from an alphabet that contains numbers, but that doesn't mean you're required to get a number in your password. Uh, and, and you would think that that's not really a problem, except for what we just heard about. Um, it's all of these, right? Um, so we have requirements that have to uh, our, our passwords have to comply with. There, you, you can't just pick anything, right? Um, so some people uh, or some password generators solve this with uh, extreme customizability. You can do anything um, with your password. But we wanted to keep what we have. We have this simple generator. How can we make it easy for people to generate passwords that are most likely going to work on uh, websites? Uh, so we ha we, uh, the first thing we want is that characters are going to be required. If we say, if we turn on numbers, we're going to have a number in the password. If we turn on symbols, we're going to have a symbol in the password. Um, so we also want the distribution of passwords to be uniform. And this will be important in just a minute. That leads to the ability to calculate entropy correctly, because if you have a non-uniform distribution, as I'm sure we've talked about here before, um, entropy calculation uh, becomes a lot more messy. And then, of course, we want to keep our simple interface. So uh, there's one way we could do it. Generate the password, look at it, does it have a number in it? If not, generate another one. And you just keep doing this until finally, yes, this password has a number in it, we're good to go. Um, that's fine. It wasn't something that we thought would be the best approach because, um, well, let's start with the, the equation for entropy. Uh, it's not too bad. If you have letters and digits, you, you're going to take the Si the entropy basically of the whole um, alphabet, letters and digits, the size of that alphabet uh, to the nth power is the number of possibilities, right? Then you subtract the number of possibilities that 
would just be uh, would, would just contain letters and subtract again the possibilities that would just be digits and then we can take the log of that. So the downside of this, um, the generator itself is not guaranteed to terminate. We could keep generating passwords and never end up with a number in our password. And of course, if you say that you need letters and digits um, in your password, and not that this is something that happens, but if you were to generate a, a password of length one, you will never get both a, num a letter and a digit in your password. And obviously, as your length is smaller, the chance of your generated password um, matching the requirements is much smaller as well. The other problem or drawback to this approach is that this function operates on giant integers. You saw in our first function that we were multiplying the length of the password times the log of the size of the alphabet. And um, it keeps, you know, it keeps numbers small, it keeps them manageable. Here we're, we're taking gigantic integers, subtracting them, and then taking the log. And it, that isn't super bad here. It, it can get more complex um, with longer, with uh, more requirements. But I, I was looking at these and, and Jeff and I and and we we're like, you know, we can do better than this. Um, so what what could we maybe do? We could generate a password like we did before, where we, we aren't guaranteed to have symbols or numbers in our password and then say whatever, I, mean, I don't care what's in this password. If it has a symbol or a number, that's fine. I'm requiring, in this case, a symbol and a number, and so I'm gonna generate one of each, and then just mix them together. That would guarantee that our password would have a symbol and a number in it. Um, but the algorithm, this algorithm, fails to produce a uniform distribution. So let's take a very, very simple case. You have two alphabets. The first alphabet contains the letter A, the second alphabet contains the letter, or the number one. And you're required to have a representative from both of these uh, alphabets, and your password in this case is of length three. So we generated one, um, we generated a password of length two, maybe it contains a number or, and a letter, maybe it doesn't, in this case it does. Uh, and then we generated a number so that we require that we're having numbers. Or, or I'm sorry, I guess the requirements here are that we have one number, not that we have one of each. Um, and so we have uh, three places this one number could go. Position one, two, or three, right? And the problem with uh, our, our algorithm here is that these last two positions are the same. Either way, you're gonna end up with A11. So there's only one way to end up with one A1. There are two ways to end up with A11, which means um, we don't have a uniform distribution and we can't uh, report the entropy with any um, kind of integrity. Okay, but I was still stuck on this problem and I didn't wanna go back to the obvious dumb, dumb approach. So take two. Let's say we generate this password like we did before. And this time, instead of generating a couple of uh, characters from the other character sets and mixing them in, let's separate them out. So we, I'm just gonna go back and, and do that again, All right? So we're keeping the same order. You saw the symbols stayed in the same order. We just separate them out and then add an extra character on the front of each of these strings and then mix them back together. This would solve the issue of having two places to stick the one, right? Because there's only one way to generate uh, that, that string of numbers. So coming back to our example, we separate the first thing we generate out into its component strings, then stick the one on the front. And now we have three ways to combine this. Um, we have two characters, one character, there's three ways to put them together. Those are the three ways, and they're all equally likely. We haven't solved the problem though. Let's look at this case. When we originally generate the two character string, remember we're, we're trying to make a three character password. We generate the two character string, there are four possibilities. These are the four. Um, and what happens when we generate the next character? We'll say in this case it's a one. For the first um, case we have AA and when we generate a one and we mix them together, these are the three possibilities, each of them equally likely. For the second case, this is the one we looked at. Um, a one, split them apart, add the one on the front, mix them back together, three possibilities again. 
same for this one. And then for this last one, there's only one possibility because um, we're not requiring letters here, we're only requiring digits. So if you generate a, the string one one and you add a one on the front, there's no mixing to do, you're done. These ones in the center here are actually the same. Why is that? Because A1 and 1A, when you split them into two strings, A and 1, are going to be the same. And so when we generate the one stick on the front, we have basically, we're starting from the same spot. We end up with the same results, which means um, these are our seven possibilities total on the, on the bottom. Uh, it makes sense. We have three characters long, two characters to choose from. It would be two to the third power, but we're not allowing AAA because it doesn't have a one in it. And so we have seven possibilities. But here's where the non-uniform non distribution comes in. So this first column, remember the very first thing we generated was AA, and uh, there is a one in, four, one in four chance of generating that string. Underneath, each of those possible results has a one-third chance of being generated, equally likely. And so there's a one-twelfth chance of any of those three results being generated. In the second column, though, a1 and 1A produce the same three results. And so um, we're treating them as, as basically one starting point. There's a, there's a one half chance of generating either A1 or 1A at the beginning. And then there's a one and third, one and three chance of generating each, any of the items in the column. Um, and so one half, one third, there's a one sixth chance of getting any of those results. And then in this last column, there's a one-fourth chance of getting one one again at the beginning, and then there are no other places to go from there, so we have a one-fourth chance of getting one one one. That makes this final result the most probable of any of the results, um, and it means that we don't have a uniform distribution. So we are back to uh, where we started. We have this um, approach, and we're going to roll with it. So we have this equation. Take the uh, length, or the, the entropy of the whole, or sorry, take the, the number of possibilities for all, uh, drawing, from, drawing randomly from the entire alphabet, subtract all the ones that are only letters, subtract all the ones that are only digits, um, and then these drawbacks that we talked about. Just to make little things a little bit easier on us, um, we're talking about entropy, but um, since we have to subtract these uh, number of possibilities before we can take the log, let's just you know remove the log to, to make the, the notation a little bit easier. Um, we can't distribute the log function among all the terms, and so it's not really useful in our conversation. So we'll talk about n instead of h, n being the number of possibilities or number of possible results, and then h would just be the log of n, log base 2. All right. so. We have this two character, or two required sets, letters and digits. Um, this equation is good if we wanted to say uh, that there are three required sets, letters, digits, and symbols, for example. We would say, um, we could say, take the number of possibilities for the whole alphabet again, right? All the, all the alphabets merge together, subtract the ones that are only um, represented by one alphabet, and then subtract the ones that are only a combination of letters and digits, only a combination of letters and symbols, and only a combination of digits and symbols, because none of those possibilities uh, contains all three letters, digits, and symbols. So as I said, this equation is good. Unfortunately, this equation is not good. What I said was good, but that's not what this equation is doing. So we said this, um, and uh, the problem here is, uh, this. this. The set of letters is a subset of the set of letters. But it's also a subset of the, let of the union of letters and digits. It's a subset of the union of letters and symbols. Basically, that means if we generated the password ABC, we would subtract it for not containing digits or symbols. We'd subtract it for not containing digits, and we'd subtract it for not containing symbols. So we're subtracting it three times. What we need is to subtract um, each kind of password only once, right? So if it has both letters and digits in it, we want to subtract that once. We don't want to subtract also the ones that only have letters there and the ones that only have digits. 
And we already have something we just talked about on a previous slide that will let us do that. Um, if we take the number of possibilities for letters and symbols, um, or sorry, letters and digits here, this first one, uh, that's going to be this, this equation back uh, a couple slides ago, where we had um, letters and digits minus letters minus digits. Um, very simplified uh, explanation of that terminology there. Um, but this, these, these equations, right? So we're defining our, our entropy or our number of possibilities in terms of our previous function. This looks like uh, recursion waiting to happen, and that's what we're going to end up with. So let's talk about um, how to describe this more generically. We were talking about LD and uh, S as letters, digits, and symbols. Let's just talk about a arbitrary set of required character sets. So this is a set of sets of characters. Um, R1, R2, R3 there could be, um, could be whatever. They just need to be distinct from each other. Uh, and so then we represent the number of possibilities as the um, uh, as n subscript uh, r of the length of the password. Okay, so using this notation, we can start to build up a pattern. If we said um, we have no required sets of characters, we can start with the simplest case. This is the empty set. We um, there are no characters in our alphabet. Then that means there are no passwords we could generate. So the number of possibilities here is zero. If we had one required set of characters, though, this is the same as not caring about requiring, right? You just have one alphabet, and you're drawing from that. Um, and so it's the original equation that we talked about. Take the size of the alphabet, raise it to the power of n. I'm going to add something in here for completeness that I'll come back to in just a minute, but this is just subtracting the empty set version, the line previous, and uh, that equals zero. So we're not changing our equation. All right. Here's where it starts to get interesting. We have uh, now two required character sets. And this is similar to what we saw before, but we we're defining it in terms of the previous line, two lines, the previous two lines. Um, so we have the required character sets that are union together to provide our full alphabet. But remember, we could end up with passwords from that alphabet that don't require or don't contain one of the character sets. And so we're going to subtract those. We're subtracting, again, the empty set there. Um, which is zero, and then we're subtracting the number where it's just containing the first required character set, and the ones where um, it's just represented by the second required character set. Again, this is the same or equivalent to the function that we defined earlier. So the problem that we had was with three required character sets. We said that if we could define uh, in in terms in with three required character sets, in terms of in with two required character sets, we'd be fine, right? Because each of these last three terms, um, we know that the number of possibilities being re returned from that is the number of passwords that can be generated where both R1 and R R2 are represented, or R1, R3, R2, R3. Um, and so we're not subtracting anything twice here. But what we want to do is figure out how can we make this generic um, to give us our, give ourselves a, a function that can operate on an arbitrary number of character sets, required character sets. So if we look here at um, the the subscripts in, in our definitions, we can see that each time we're unioning all of them together. Right, that's pretty obvious. Um, even in the first one, it, you could call that the union of all the character sets because there's only one. And in the empty set, there's nothing to union. There's nothing there. OK. Um, now what about the second term? So our subscript is three required character sets. And these underlined pieces are the um, only thing different in each of these uh, terms within the second term, right? So uh, what? pattern can you see in the um, underlying pieces? Each of those is a proper subset of the one on the far left, R1, R2, R3. So, and in fact, these are all of the proper subsets of that set. This is the same for this third line, um, the empty set, the set containing just R1, the set containing just R2. These are the proper subsets and all of the proper subsets of the set containing R1 and R2. 
Same for here. The only proper subset of that is the empty set, and there are no proper subsets of the empty set. All right. The power set is a function that will get us to um, this, uh, what, what we're looking for here. It is the set of all subsets of a set. So you can represent it in set builder notation like this, um, where x is any subset of, of r. Um, so for example, with the three required character sets, this is the power set of, um, of that set. You can see, though, that we have this extra set on the end, r1, r2, r3. That's, that's the same as what was passed into the power set. It is r itself, um, and we don't care about that. That wasn't one of the things that we need to subtract. That's what we're subtracting from, right? So um, we want the set of all proper subsets of a set, which basically means all of the subsets except for the set itself. You can represent that like this. You can also represent it with set subtraction, um, the power set of R minus the set containing just R. All right, we have all the pieces put together to make our recursive function. Here's what we started with, and here is our function. So you can see this first term. We're talking about the union of all of the sets, and that's represented here. For every x and r, union them all together, and then we're going to take the, or, or, or raise that, uh, the size of that full alphabet to the power of n. Then we're going to subtract this term. So for every y in the set represented by the power set of r without r itself, we're going to take, uh, to, to call again n. So this is our recursion. Um, this time passing at y. So we're passing at a subset of r back into the original equation and um, taking that value, summing it up with all the other uh, values for all of the proper subsets of r, uh, and then subtracting it from the, uh, the original term, or the first term. One more thing we can add is if we have a set of allowed characters. Let's say that we um, are requiring letters and digits, and we are going to also allow symbols, but we don't care if there's a symbol there. That's probably not a practical way to approach it, but for example. Then we can say that um, we union the set um, with A with the required character sets, and this is all, so this is all the character sets we can, we can draw from. That's our full alphabet. And then we just pass it along to our recursive function. The recursion ends when we get to the empty set of required character sets. When there are no required character sets, the only alphabet left are the allowed character sets, and that is the value. Um, and so that's the ground for our recursion, and we can talk about the entropy of this full thing as just the log base two of um, these values. So we talked about a couple of drawbacks at the beginning. What happens if we don't generate a password that meets our requirements? Well, we keep generating. What is the um, probability that we are never going to terminate? Very small. But what is the probability for the first time of, of keeping the first candidate or, or, or of any single um, pass through the algorithm? And it looks like this. Um, this is if we are requiring lower and upper digits, sorry, lowercase, uppercase, and digits, and excluding ambiguous characters, which is our uh, default for our, our password generator at 1Password. And so you can see for one character and two characters, there are no possibilities because we're requiring three different character sets. For three characters, um, the, the, po the probability that we'll accept the first password we generate is around 15%. So it's not super great, but you know, you start multiplying that up by a few times, and the probability that we're not going to terminate is still pretty small. But it only gets smaller as we get longer. Um, you can see by number six there um, that we're over 50%, and uh, so we're um, more likely to, to keep the first password to generate than, than not. And by uh, 20 characters, we are at 94%, and 32 characters at 99%. So the, um, 
the, this is directly related to the number of bits of entropy difference. This is another kind of concern is that um, when we require character sets, we're actually making our um, number of possibilities smaller, and so we're reducing our entropy because there aren't as many possible passwords. But as you get long, as the password gets longer, the uh, the difference that makes shrinks exponentially. So at three characters, um, there's a three bit, about a three bit difference um, between requiring the three character sets and simply allowing them. At six, we're already under a bit, right? There's a 50%, greater than 50% chance, so that means we have less than a bit of difference. Um, by 20 characters, we're under a tenth of a bit, and uh, 32 characters is like a 50th of a bit of a difference between requiring the character sets and just simply allowing them. So the, the longer it gets, the, the fewer, not the fewer possibilities we're discarding, just the fewer relative to the number of possibilities that there are. You could say and um, start groaning now that requiring the character sets does not make a bit of difference. All right. The other um, drawback that we talked about was uh, computing with these super large integers and keeping them all in memory and stuff. We've been we've written our library in Go, and so we're using um, big dot int, which is arbitrary length. But when we go to take the log, we actually have the only the only function that is provided is on a float 64, and so we have to convert it to a float 64. And the maximum size that we get from that is uh, 1024 bits, which means that um, we can't report an entropy greater than 1024 bits. But for passwords that you're generating, um, this isn't probably going to be a concern. 128 bits is um, a pretty long password already. All right, so back to what we wanted. We wanted to require the characters. We got that. We have a uniform distribution. No passwords are more likely to occur than other passwords. The entropy calculation that we have is uh, finally precise uh, because we were obsessed with it. And the um, uh, interface we got to keep simple. And so this is what I would call good enough. You can find the, um, the code for this at github.com slash one password slash SPG. If you are a Go developer, you can import it with this fancy vanity URL. Um, and then you can see this in action on our website, onepassword.com slash password generator. Or if you use one password X from the Chrome App Store, or actually from Firefox as well. Um, then uh, it's, it's there as well. And we're working to roll, a, roll this uh, generator out to each of our clients. Thank you very much.